Okay, so it's been a while since this idea initially popped up, and I was going to make a video about it. Believe me, this is kind of the curse of having Vancouver Canucks-related things always go up at 3 p.m. PST on the channel, because when there are other topics that normally happen throughout the day, it pushes the Vancouver video out of range. Like, I don't normally like to go over three to four videos per day, unless, of course, it's the draft or it's day one of free agency or day two of free agency. But as the days go on, once there are three or four videos and I'm like, yeah, OK, that's the show for today. I'm like, all right, this topic that I wanted to talk about about Vancouver, we're going to have to move it to the next day. But the past few days have been filled with so many other extra pieces of news that I'm like, darn, it's been a few days and we haven't talked about this yet. Let's talk today about the Frank Saravelli trade rumor that popped up on Sportsnet 650 back on July 3rd. So three days ago. The San Jose Sharks apparently had themselves a deal on the table for Vancouver Canucks defenseman Tyler Myers. Defensive liability, draft, and just very expensive defensemen. This is a player that the Vancouver Canucks fan base has been sort of tackling as the new Louis Erickson in some respect. Okay, maybe not that far. I'd say that Oliver ekman Larson kind of had that same reputation too, but Tyler Myers was signed by the Vancouver Canucks to a $6 million by five-year deal in 2019. He was supposed to be a point-producing sort of defenseman that could go out there and maybe get some physical elements onto the team. He's six foot eight. I think he's the tallest player in the NHL right now, if not the second tallest, something like that. Oh, because Elmer Soderblom made the league. Yeah, I don't think that Myers is the tallest anymore. Something like that. But he's a big dude. He's a slow dude. He has very poor defensive efficiency. His pylon method, where he just dives on the ice to try to block the centering pass, almost never works, but he does that move so often. Plus the fact that he rarely adds a physical element when he definitely has the capacity to do so. Myers has been very frustrating for Vancouver Canucks fans because for a guy making $6 million a season because he's right-handed, he doesn't provide $6 million caliber play. Now, am I going to say that Myers is the worst option to have on your team? Not necessarily. I mean, there are some good elements to his game, the fact that he can log up minutes and that he is a little bit more mature with his decision making than some other guys who have been seventh defenseman in the Vancouver Canucks system the past little while. Like, he definitely has the mind of somebody who has played in the NHL for years. He doesn't make those rookie mistakes as often as some of the other rookies do. But... When it comes down to it, Tyler Myers is not a good player for the value he is worth on the contract, and because he has been playing like this for years, there's always been a conversation about trading him away. This is why, when we learned from Frank Saravelli that Tyler Myers actually might have gotten traded to the San Jose Sharks earlier during the draft, we were all wondering, firstly, what happened, and secondly, what was the trade that would have seen him get sent over? Well, this is Sarah Bailey's radio hit on 650. My understanding was that the deal on the table was Tyler Myers straight up for forward Kevin LeBanc. And my immediate instinct upon reading that was, oh, interesting. Another winger, eh? Before we get over into Kevin LeBanc, let's go over onto this article on San Jose Hockey Now, written by Shang Peng from two days ago. Kevin LeBanc for Tyler Myers trade on the table. It talks about pretty much the same things that we had just gone over right now, but there also is another quote from Sarah Bailey in this article. My understanding was that the Canucks were absolutely exasperated that this was on the table and sat out there for so long, Sarah Bailey said on Monday. And so the implication here is that this trade might have just been on the table, but it really wasn't in Vancouver's control as to whether or not it could get done. It was really San Jose that was stalling and not executing. They were just holding out and not pulling that trigger. Now, you could ask the question, why? This article implies that maybe San Jose could revive the deal because they're waiting until September 1st, when Myers is due a $5 million signing bonus. If a team acquires him before that day, they would be on the hook for that cash. However, if they trade for him after September 1st, they would owe Myers just $1 million in cash of his $6 million AAV, though the entire AAV would count against the cap. Now, that's an intriguing idea, and it's one that I definitely do think makes sense. If you're an NHL owner or a president, you wouldn't want to be shelling out $5 million extra for a guy that you could get for only $1 million that you have to pay if you wait a little bit. But realistically, this trade idea is one in my mind that I don't really particularly like for Vancouver. And here's why. 
Sure, Tyler Myers has his flaws, and Tyler Myers is not really the best defenseman out there. He's making a lot of money, but he's got one year left. The thing with Kevin LeBanc is, even though he's significantly younger, he's 27 years old, Myers is 33. Even though he's cheaper, LeBanc is making 4.7 million, Myers is making 6. These guys expire at the same time. 2024, and Kevin LeBanc had 33 points in 72 games played last year as a seemingly overpaid middle six offensively minded forward. The thing with LeBanc is that he is a winger, and the Vancouver Canucks, what have we been saying this entire time about their team? They have way too many gosh darn wingers. From Kuzmenko to Besser to Garland to Bavillier to Pearson to Mikheyev, these are six wingers right here. That's three lines worth of wingers, and that's not even including Pod Colson or Hoaglander or any of the guys that might make a splash at training camp. The Vancouver Canucks absolutely do not need Kevin LeBanc. And the thing with Tyler Myers is, if you get rid of him, the team all of a sudden gets a little bit weaker on defense. And I'm going to say that because I feel like the security of Tyler Myers and the actually okay parts of his game are a lot more reliable than some of these Abbotsford Canucks guys being thrown into an immediate NHL role for 82 games played. Like, we were already talking about this earlier on, but having a decor of Cole, Hughes, Hronick, Susie, and Myers with some other guy playing in that final 6D spot is honestly pretty alright. As long as you give Myers more sheltered minutes, you don't have to force him to play 25 plus minutes a night, and if you're able to make it so that Tyler Myers isn't getting lost out there for one, two minute shifts trapped in his own zone, that makes his job easier. Because Myers would be at his absolute worst when he was tired, when he was fatigued, he'd be out there for a few minutes on a shift, and that's when he just absolutely doesn't do anything in the defensive zone, just lets the team, other team walk around him and score a really nice cross crease goal. He doesn't even get a stick out. That happened way too often because Tyler Myers was unfortunately too relied upon as a member of the Vancouver Canucks. With Susie Cole, Hronick all here, it makes things a lot easier. And so... For Tyler Myers, this is a guy whom, for one more season, I think it's okay to keep him. Like, one more year, six million dollars AAV, you know they're not gonna re-sign him, and if they do, you know it's not gonna be for a significant dollar amount, so why trade this guy away to get a player who is gonna be cheaper on the payroll, yes, but who's only gonna be doing so for, what, 1.3 million? He's also going to expire soon, and he's in a position where the Vancouver Canucks have way too many players on their team already? There are way too many wingers on this team. You don't need to get Kevin LeBanc. And that's not to disrespect LeBanc and his talent. I know he's had really good years in the past, but that's just not who he is today. This is the San Jose Hockey Now article that goes out there and talks about LeBanc is six years younger than Meyer and is a highly skilled winger. He's also a little one-dimensional, and there's no telling how much he's actually going to play under head coach David Quinn. Quinn benched and demoted LeBanc multiple times last season. And so, if you take a look at his point production, he had 33 points in 72 games. His career year saw him get 56 points in 82 games played. That was four years ago in 2019. And yeah, he was a lot younger at that time frame. He was 23, but he's 27 now. He's sort of declined in terms of point production, and now he's in this position where he has an unfavorable contract as well as a middle to bottom-ish six player. I'm not going to say bottom six flat out. Let's just say middle six because... His skill set is more defined for a scoring type role than a more grinder type. But either way, let me know your thoughts in the comments section below about this entire idea. Tyler Myers for Kevin LeBanc. I know I've been hard on Myers this entire time he's been here, ever since he signed back in 2019. But I'm not going to lie, this trade is not really one that I see actually benefiting the Canucks more so than if they just decided to stay put. I can't believe I'm going out there and saying that, especially for a trade that was on the table, but... This is kind of how the Vancouver Canucks team is constructed. They need less wingers. They don't need to get another one. And right-handed defensemen are a commodity. Tyler Myers just happens to be one whom you really see a lot better play out of when he doesn't play all the minutes that he's been given. But we'll see how Ian Cole and Carson Soucy help diversify that as the year goes on. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below either way about the last remaining year of Tyler Myers. Kevin LeBanc is also in that boat too. Thoughts in the comments about both of these guys, thoughts about a trade, whether or not you think it was a good idea to make the trade, or if it's alright if the Vancouver Connects stay put. If you're a Sharks fan, what are your thoughts on this one as well? I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.